It's Medicosis Perfectionalis resuming our bleeding and coagulation series of lectures. In the previous video, we have talked about the antithrombin 3. Today, I'll talk about fibrinolysis, or as Merriam Webster say, fibrinolysis or fibrinolysis. I don't care how you pronounce it, I just care, you know, what the flip you're talking about. Now, with that being said, let's get started. Here are just some of my previous bleeding and coagulation videos in my bleeding and coagulation playlist, so please subscribe and save the playlist, otherwise you're missing out on a lot of goodies. Hemostasis, blood stable, i.e. stopping the bleeding, prevention of blood loss, steps of hemostasis, vasoconstriction, temporary plated plug, coagulation, this is primary hemostasis, this is secondary hemostasis. Of course, we have talked about all of these before. Now we have fibrinolysis. We should dissolve the clot and restore the function and restore the normal blood flow because baby, it's over. The party is over. History will remember me for my words of wisdom. Primary hemostasis is balanced on the dynamic harmonious antagonism between the smooth endothelium, which wants the blood to flow and the thrombocytes which demand blood clotting. So here is the story morning glory. You injure yourself. Vasoconstriction of the vessel occur. Temporary plate plug known as primary hemostase, depending on the type of the trauma. If the trauma is very small, such as a paper cut, the plate plug is sufficient. Primary hemostasis is more than enough. Thank you so much. But if it's larger, we need the coagulation cascade, the secondary hemostasis, to convert fibrinogen into fibrin, laying down a strong meshwork, trapping the red blood cell, forming a clot. This clot is stronger. Then the clot will contract, producing the serum. Then we have fibrinolysis, which is the topic of today, to destroy the fibrin clot and regenerate and restore the function and then we will regenerate the tissue. We have talked about vasoconstriction before. I know that repetition is the mother of pedagogy but I'm not gonna repeat myself. Just remember that it's a local myogenic spasm. The platelet is just floating around checking the gate. If the gate is secure and the layer underneath is not exposed, everything is fine, okay. But if the gate is cracked open and the subendothelial collagen is exposed, baby, it's on. Same thing with the engineer in the post-earthquake inspection. He is looking at the interior walls. If the wall is fine, probably no much damage has been done to the building. I'm not an engineer, but I, okay, I just have an opinion. And then, but if the walls are cracked like this and the subendothelial collagen is exposed, oh, oh, the earthquake was so bad and this building is not fine. So here's the platelet and here's the platelet and they are activated when the subendothelial collagen is exposed because it means that the endothelial is damaged because it means there is a trauma, baby. Here is the process of primary hemostasis. We start with platelet adhesion thanks to the GP1P receptor on the platelet and the von Willebrand factor on the subendothelial collagen. Then we have the platelet activation. They are active. They start to secrete thromboxane A2 and ADP. ADP will express the receptor called GP2B3A, GP for glycoprotein. And this GP2B3A is important because this platelet is going to attach this platelet thanks to this receptor. Then there is a molecular fibrinogen in between. So this is primary hemostasis. Secondary hemostasis is converting this fibrinogen into strong fibrin meshwork. Do you know how does that? Um, protein called thrombin. Why do we call it thrombin? Because this is a, the protein of thrombosis. Mark my words. There are only two ways to coagulate, the intrinsic and the extrinsic, but there are several ways to bleed. This is physiology. This is pathology. Secondary hemostasis or the coagulation cascade. We start from here. What's the goal? Fibrin, because successful people begin with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey said. So fibrin is here. It comes from fibrinogen, which is inactive. Who activates it to fibrin? Thrombin. Thrombin is now active, but it's present in an inactive form called prothrombin. 
this is the president we call it factor one this is the vice president we call it factor two because we discover this first then this first then we go upwards okay that's why factor one is here and factor 12 is here something your professor will never tell you okay then let's go to the prothrombinase complex we need two numbers and two words what are the two numbers 10 and 5 what are the two words calcium and phospholipid cool now the extrinsic which is the easiest one you injure yourself here's the trauma extrinsic means we need something from outside of us outside of the vessel to activate this cascade what kind of thing do you mean how about the tissue factor coming from the tissue yes it works why because if there is a trauma the tissue factor is gonna come in contact with the blood here okay you mean the presence of the tissue factor in the blood is an evidence of trauma indeed okay now we have the tissue factor also known as tissue thromboplastin or tissue phospholipid tpl activating factor 7 into 7a 7 is gonna activate 10 into 10a 10 is the most important factor this is Lionel messi and it's gonna is part a crucial part of the prothrombinase complex that's gonna activate prothrombin and thrombin activating fibrogen into fibrin that's the extrinsic how about the intrinsic okay it's longer we need something from within something intrinsic to the blood vessel how about the subendothelial collagen okay that works how about the high molecular weight kinogen it works how about the plasma calicrin also works all of these are activating the factor 12 into 12a 12 is gonna activate 11 11 is gonna activate. how about 10 no 10 is here baby 10 is here forget about 10 now okay 9 and then 8 yes you got it this is fast they act quickly the house of representative these guys are very slow and old people called the senate they are slow but more efficient now we're done and the most or the highest number was factor 12. then we discovered factor 13 because some people after forming fibrin would bleed to death and die what the what after all of this will die yes why because you didn't stabilize the fibrin so there is factor 13 called the fibrin stabilizing factor what a glorious name it's going to activate the fibrin into fibrin how would you stabilize a fibrin it's called cross linking fibrinolysis let's break that down what does fiber means they are fibers i n protein so fibrin is the fibrillar or fibrous protein lysis breakdown so fibrinolysis is the breakdown of the fibrin i have prepared 50 hematology cases in the same manner as the 10 cases about hodgkin's lymphoma that was in my hematology playlist these 50 cases cover bleeding disorders Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and thank you in advance. What's the goal of fibrinolysis? What is the why? Because Friedrich Nietzsche said, he who has a why to live can bear almost anyhow. Now I'm gonna borrow his thoughts. Medicosis Perfectionalis says, he who has a why to fibrinolysis can bear almost any mechanism. The mechanism is going to be easy if you understand the why, if you understand the purpose of fibrinolysis or fibrinolysis. So why the flip do we need fibrinolysis or thrombolysis or thrombolysis? Because if you leave the clot alone, the clot will grow and grow and grow and it will press on the local structures. It's going to cause lots of problem. It can occlude vessel leading to uh, heart attacks every kind like you know many people die of heart attacks stroke etc this is gonna happen if you do not break them down because it's over like okay we need a clot to stop bleeding but once you have a clot please break it down otherwise it will grow and grow and grow now here is the purpose of fibrolysis if you don't break the clot it's gonna grow and kill you so now you should be interested in learning about fibrinolysis because without fibrinolysis your blood clot will grow until you suffer now you better bloody be excited about fibrinolysis okay i'm super super excited fibrinolysis the how the mechanism primary and secondary primary is physiology secondary is pathology and pharmacology which are kind of the same thing because i love to mess with pharmacists primary fibrinolysis the how First, which enzyme breaks the clot down? Okay, you've told us that the purpose of fibrinolysis is to break the clot down. 
lest it should grow and grow and grow and kill us and make us suffer. Okay, so what enzyme breaks down this clot? It's called plasmin, the protein that's in the plasma. It's a proteolytic enzyme. No kidding, because these are protein fibers, they end in IN. If there is an enzyme to break them, them down, it better bloody be a proteolytic enzyme. Makes perfect sense. Then what? After the plasmin breaks the clot, the clot is broken down into fragments. We call them degradation products. We call them also split products. Same exact thing. You break down fibrin into fibrin degradation products. And you break down fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products. Same thing. Okay, what will happen to the fragments? They are cleared by your sewage system. The liver and the kidney, they get rid of every stuff. You just keep eating and destroying your health and these poor guys are suffering. Fibrinolysis is not over yet. We shall continue in the next video. Please subscribe, hit the bell, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, get all of my notes, all the cases, and support this channel on patreon.com forward slash medicosis so that I can send you my bloody Dropbox links. Thank you for watching. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.